Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. We are called by the Lord God Almighty in various ways and from various nations. What is the purpose of the call? It is not to wear the tag or the title of pastor or reverend or whatever we may use as our title wherever we find ourselves. But there is a purpose why each of us has been called. And of course, each time an effective pastor, and then by effectiveness actually, what that was tried to bring out is that you will see result is result getting the result of why you are there if you are not getting the result you are not effective if there is no result for what you are placed in a particular place to do something it means you are not effective in that work but you will be regarded as an effective person if the work given to you, anyone who gives it to you sees result, and yourself also see there is result, you will know that the work is effective. It can be efficient, but not effective. Efficient in the sense that you can have, you know, things put in order. Set them in order. And everything is in order, but there is no actual life. Yes, you may be efficient in doing that, but you are, the work is not effective. And so, from time to time, every pastor goes back to ask himself, like what of our veteran fathers usually do, each day after his work, he will take his journal to write what his work has been for the whole day and see where he has not met what God wants him to do. And of course, ask God for grace to do the next day's work. So each pastor, each minister of the gospel sits back each day to examine himself and say, what I am called to do, am I actually getting results? Getting results could be different thing to different people, but we examine our own by what the scripture says. And I would like us please to open to that Place, even though written out, but let us just read it in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 14. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 14. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, 
and some pastors and teachers for that is where the job comes in for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry number one for the define of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God until this happens until we see these things happening we have not done effective work to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children those to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the tricky of men in the cunning of craftiness of distasteful bluffing. Praise the Lord. So there is a purpose why we are called pastors. First of all, we are children of God. We, have been, we receive two calls. The first, we answer the call to become children of God, isn't it? That's the first call, to become children of God. After that first call, we now, by his special grace, God place his hand on few people. And at times, I begin to wonder how God will call a little me to be a pastor of his people. I don't know how you feel. But I feel it is a great thing. He picked us from here and there. And said, become a co-worker with me. I bless you over souls of people. And what I want is to make these people grow and become like my son. Let them not become children all the time. Take care of them. I am going to help you feed these people. And you are more or less a father to all these people. Even those who gave birth to you physically. And you no wonder... You know why that some of some of them will see you and they will call you Baba, isn't it? Even when some of them should have been given back to you, birth to you. But because they recognize that you have been placed over them spiritually. And of course, you know one thing is that if you are a pastor, the member believes you have all the answers to all the problems he has in life. A medical challenge, he will run to you because he believes the pastor has an answer. Social problem, he will come to you. Spiritual problem, oh, you are the Baba, you are the next to God. And whatever challenge in life, he believes that he will get answer from you. And so that puts on us a very big task and responsibility to understand why we have been called. And if we don't take care, I have always told myself, I say, being this pastor is for a time. What has always guided me is this thing you see here, the night, comet, when no man can work. And if it is like that, and if it is true, and God has called me for a period of time to be the shepherd of his people, it means I'm no longer my own. Until that is achieved. Praise the Lord. So we like to go a little bit forward and say Jesus was himself the good shepherd 
And he left us perfect example on how this ministry could be effectively done. In the Old Testament, one of God's greatest cries is the neglect of the shepherds on the sheep. And since then, God's major concern has been on how to feed the sheep. When we talk of the sheep, fortunately, before I gave my life to Christ, I have been a little shepherd, not the herdsman of the Fulanese, but the little shepherd that carried local, take care of the local sheep. And so I know how the sheep behaves. Sheep believes in the owner. When we are coming back from school, in the midst of all the people, if I talk, wherever they are, you start hearing them crying in the wilderness, in the bush where they are, because they heard my voice. They recognize my voice. And I understand what it means that they say they don't follow strangers. If you are not the owner, when you come to take them, they will be looking at you. But when the owner comes, as you come, they are ready to follow you. Wherever you go. Just be in front. They will all be going. So I know a little bit of what being a shepherd in that sense means. And when God says, we are shepherds, it's a very strong thing. Pastors, overseers, it is a very strong thing. In the Old Testament, there were pastors like us. Whether they were prophets, or priests, or whatever they were. Let us just quickly open to Ezekiel 34. We can read just from verse 1 to 6. And we will hear the heart cry of God. If you have time, you can read the entire chapter and see it. Ezekiel 34, verses 1 to 6. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds. What is the first thing God said to the shepherds? Woe. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flocks, you eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who are sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth and no one was seeking or searching for them. Is it not a very pathetic story? It was God that said this. It wasn't any other person accusing one thing that struck me there was that 
Was it true there were no shepherds in Israel that time? If there were no shepherds, why did God say prophesy to the shepherds? And, they say, and at the same time, he said that there was no shepherd. I said it, can, it could be true because of ineffectiveness of the pastor. God declares his position vacant. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because of his ineffectiveness, because of his way of life, he could still be busy doing a lot of things, but very ineffective. And heaven say his seat has been declared vacant. He was not feeding the sheep. He was only caring for himself. Brethren, let us just come home. What are our programs like? What are our complaints like? In several places, I know. Even where I belong. Some of our complaints is that you come to the people that they don't even care about you. Have you heard that before? You are there. Nobody comes to care, ask about you. They are not bringing you anything. Nobody is bringing you money. Nobody is bringing you food. Nobody is bringing you clothing. Nobody takes care of you. You are just there. And when it is like that, the whole aggression will be transferred to who? Either to the sheep or to the one who stationed you, who brought you, who posted you there. Is it not, is it not a practical thing? These are some of the things we see. And what is it? What happens after that? Well, since they don't care for me, let me look for what I can do for myself. You know, since seven hours of the twelve hours of the day, if it is areas that you do agriculture, the person is in his farm, with his family. Let them do their farm work. And when he comes back, he's tired. You talk of Bible study, you say, after all, what is a Bible study? Um, I am just coming back from the farm. He has become a sheep instead of shepherd. And then when you talk of anything, you tell you, after all, my children go to school, I need money to take care of them. And these things are very real things. But why? The first is that God observed that the shepherds, though they are there, but they are not there. They have not taken care of the sheep. We want to know how do we take care of the sheep. You remember the general theme of this retreat, of this conference, is what? Holding forth the faithful word. And if the pastor, Jesus made such observation that God made in the Old Testament. Jesus made such observation. Can just somebody read, let us find out. Read uh, Matthew 9, 36. Can we just see? He made the same observation that God said the same thing in the Old Testament. Jesus said it also in the New Testament. And to say that sometimes we are not doing what we have been called to do. He said, verse 36 of Matthew chapter 9, But when he saw the multitudes, that is when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary, scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. 
Was there no shepherd at that time? There were. There were shepherds. Jesus saw these multitudes coming to him. Saw these people coming to him. Some other versions say they were harassed. They were harassed. They were scattered. And they were like sheep without shepherd. And that's how our congregation look like. Like sheep without shepherd. What do we do to do effective pastoral work in the local church? The, where I belong, we have what we call local church. We have another one we call sacred. We have another one we call diocese, archdiocese, and conference. I've always told everybody, there is nobody that is called a conference man or woman. Everybody belongs to the local church. So the whole work is at the local church, is at the local parish, is at the local assembly where you belong. That's where the whole work is nobody there is no now church set any other assembly set above the local church the local church is where we belong so if the effective work is not done there we have lost it and then what do we do what is the effective work effective pastoral work let us still read today we must appreciate the fact that the flock of God in the local assembly, local church or parish are harassed, distressed, and are like sheep without shepherd. They are busy searching for pasture anywhere. Does that tell you anything? Busy searching for what? For pasture. Because the reason why you are a shepherd is because the sheep must feed. That's the thing. If the sheep is not fed, then the shepherd has not done his work. Please, giving my own life, they must be fed. Even if it is something that will take my own blood, they must be fed. Do you think that those people are very are fearful of anybody? They are not fearful. That's the reason why they go with all kinds of things they go with. So that if you are on their way, they push you down to make sure that their cow is fed. So if the sheep is not fed, the pastor has not walked. No matter whatever he thought he has done. He has not walked. And that's what God is saying. No matter the title. You know, you know that what we cherish so much. We are still coming to that. We are still coming to it. Is how we must be addressed. What we must be. Somebody will ask you, are you still only ordinary reverend since you started this ministry? No promotion? Say, my brother, that's how I see it all. I'm still ordinary reverend, no promotion. No. My colleagues have been promoted. Others, I started before them. They have gone ahead of me. I'm still here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and we think that effectiveness comes by promotion. And I don't think so. I believe if you are an effective pastor who knows how to feed your people with the word of God and they believe that you have the world wherever you are you will be happy what makes me happy is that when I have a, a handful of people and I speak the word, they understand it, and they are happy, and they are happy with God, I feel happy. Not with the title I have, 
because <laughs> that title is not it's just something that we will know what it is but the job is not in the title the job we do the feeding of the sheep is not in the title the most important thing is that you have been called to feed that. But then, how can you feed if you are not yourself fed? Is it, is it possible? It's not possible. If you are not yourself fed. So let us go on. Today, our Bible colleges and theological colleges or seminaries are busy producing great numbers of pastors for the local church but the question has been now has been how many eventually carry out effective ministry in the local church the pastors are to feed care and nurture the sheep under their care according to john 21 15 to 17. it is a fact that whatever a local church will be spiritually largely depends on what the pastor himself is the student cannot be above his master says the lord if the pastor therefore must feed the sheep himself must have been fed um, it would not be like where there was a scarcity of food in a particular family the children were crying they don't have anything for breakfast the mother doesn't have anything the little food that remains the father said in order for me to go out and get food i need to eat it let me eat the one the food the little food at home so that i will have strength to go and look for what everybody will eat because if you will eat this little one and I will not have strength to go out. It will not cut up for anybody. That's not the kind of thing we are talking about. One is that the word of God must have taken root in your life. You give out of what you have. We have been told in the morning, the Lord used our Father and the Lord here to dish out a lot of things when he was talking of personal prayer he did a lot of work if the pastor cannot sit down with the word of God because of what God has placed in his hand study first for himself I've always admired lawyers maybe there are some of us here who are lawyers by other profession before becoming pastors I see a lawyer who has client and he has to defend him at the law court he will never rest he will consult all the law books available to him anywhere just to make sure he gets facts remember I'm not saying getting truth he gets facts that will support his case he will spend all the night reading what is the what is he looking for at the end of time is it not to win a case for the client that's what he's looking for but you have people maybe in your own little congregation you have up to 20 people let me just put it that way 20 souls who are looking up to you pastor how do we go to heaven and people who since you came there and you are their pastor you cannot confidently say i am sure this one is a child of god i am sure out of these 25 have received christ and they are growing but all that you do is that I know there are 20 when I come here 
by the grace of God, they are not going to die. As I am living, they will still be up to 20. As I have received, so I have given back to them. That's not effective work. If you are asked to state clearly the level of, the level of faith of the people you are pastoring, can you truly say, I know their level of faith? Or are there people who always will be taught the elementary things of the scripture, the elementary thing of doctrine? Being born again, you know there are at times the only message, which is the foundation message, is that give your life to Christ. And after that, you don't know how many that gave their life to Christ. But each Sunday, it is give your life to Christ. There are people who will say, after giving life to Christ, what else? We don't grow. And so do you blame them because they will go in search of how to feed? Do you know that, as I was saying, I have been a local little uh, pastoral person pastoring animals that time if you are carrying if your sheep are crying looking for food even even though if you are their pastor or they are the shepherd at that time you don't have anywhere to take them to and they just see one man carrying some leaves green leaves or whatever Passing where you are, whether it is something to be eaten or not, they will follow that person. Because that person has something they are looking for. They want to be fed. That's how we see things happening in most many of our congregations. And sometimes we say people are stealing our sheep. I don't call it sheep stealing. I say because I am not effective. That's the reason why they are looking for us where to feed. But if I am an effective pastor, they will not leave me. They will look for me. And that is the truth. God said, I have put something in your hand. I have given you everything that pertains to life. Everything that will give them life. Everything that will sustain them. Everything that will make them whatever they would like to be in life. I have already put it in your hand. And except you know that these things you have them. You cannot as well give it to them. Do you remember when Jesus fed the 5,000? Do you remember what happened? When he asked the disciples, ask these people to sit down on that green grass. Do you know do you remember? When he asked for the two loaves and the three and five fish, and the, when it was given, after prayers, did you know what he did? You remember, you know what he did. He said, Bible said he gave he, he gave these things to his uh, disciples. Maybe Peter was taking care of, you know, the group that sat up to uh, 500 or 1,000. He will give him and say, oh yeah, take. Or 500, oh yeah, take. I was saying, why is it that Jesus was giving it to them? And as they sit in groups. He has also given me bread. He has blessed from my bowl. Did not the Bible say that Jesus said that I am the bread of life? Didn't he say so? I am the bread of life. He has given me himself. He has given me his word. And he has given me a congregation. And so if they must feed, I have the food in my hands. And what remains is that do I know how to give? Am I ready to give? What is my problem in giving it out? Is my own problem 
the reason why I should not. Do you know that sometimes we hold what has been given to us? We hold it. We use it ourselves. We don't release them to those that this food is meant for. We ask him the Lord to bring us to the point where we will understand. The pastor, we said, must himself be fed. The food here is the word of God. Jesus said to Satan, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is the word of God to every situation, to every circumstance, to every need of any man. The word of God is sufficient. But where the word of God is lacking, the sheep is dying. For brethren, we will still meet it somewhere, but let me bring it up now. Do you know what effectiveness for us today means in the ministry? To some people, and we are gradually following the trend. Yesterday I read, as we were coming, I just read some news flash that we are entering my phone. So one pastor in Lagos, they just cited him. He moved into his church with one vehicle they call Bentley. I don't know the name. I, whether, I, whether I pronounce it correctly. They say the cost is 74 million naira. And the other day, the other last Sunday, he used another one, the uh, uh, sub, uh, it, uh, Homer limousine that cost 80 million. One pastor. What just <laughs> went out of my mouth? I said, these are the ones that the kidnapper should be looking for. They shouldn't look for poor people. They should look for these ones. How can a pastor? Just two cars, one 74 million, one 80 million. And what would people say is a very successful pastor? And people would like to be, how will I go even close to him? You see, some uh, security men, even police, or police officers become his boy boy uh, servants because of money. And some of us believe that when you are effective is that you become a pastor today. The next day, you have already gotten one or two vehicles. The other day, you have built one house. And another time, you have done this, you have done that. You are a very, very effective uh, pastor. And some of us also believe we are effective pastors because when you come where I am at the church when you come there I just built one big church building for them yes very good church building everywhere the band set is there everything is there people can come and sing and jump up you are an effective uh, pastor and you will think that is where effectiveness is I call the house where we worship here they call it this one is called tent isn't it and um, I call it sheep pen do you know what sheep pen is sheep pen is where you keep the animals you keep the this other so we are we are the people of church where they are kept for worship it should be sheep pen is the house for worship that is not the first thing you are being you will be asked for when you face with your organ who send you the chief shepherd i don't think the first thing he will ask is did you build cathedral for them i don't think that's the first question 
were you able to buy band set before you left before you finish your work were you able to get buses everywhere even though they are necessary you you count all those things but count how many souls that through your pastoral work bent down and said lord jesus i give you my life through your ministry you may not count one but you can count number of buildings how many lands you bought you bought land here you bought land there you bought land there everywhere you went you bought land but you never bought a soul that's not what you are sent for even though it's necessary that is the sheep pen that is where the sheep gather but that is not their food isn't it when the sheep is hungry is it dancing they will eat they look for what will connect them with their maker I am telling you the church is hungry the sheep is hungry and that's the reason why many have followed what is not real God in Ezekiel said that they have scattered everyone is looking for what it will eat and sometimes they ate what is poisonous don't you think we are responsible for those who have been poisoned spiritually they have been poisoned do you think we are not responsible when you didn't feed them and they are hungry and they see somebody carrying something you know probably said a lot of that I think was it not yesterday or this morning when it was yesterday when he was talking about the poison in the pot you know because somebody went and gave people what they should not eat some of our members are getting out they are your members by name which church do you go they will tell you they are their church but on that days in the week where do they go and some will be able to tell you they will give their tithe where they are fed have you ever heard that you will stay and quarrel with them and say you are not paid your tithe you are not paid this you are not paid that and they will go at the back and say after all it is where they are fed that they give their tithe that's what they say do you blame them for that because they are not fed when we are talking of being fed by the word does it mean that we don't preach the word does it mean that all we, we have been preaching is not the word all that we have been teaching is what no it's not what we are saying and we are not condemning all of us all that god is bringing to us is that there is an expectation we should get ourselves ready this conference provides us a very good forum I've always prayed and look forward to it because I come here to be sharpened each time. And there's no time you are sharpened. You understand what God wants you to go and go back, start doing it, that will not get result. You will get result. But there are still those who say, Where are you going? So <laughs> somebody has to say, has to say to us, you people go to look at you look at where you have reached you go to a layman who has never gone to bible school and he will be teaching you praise the lord i don't know whether you have heard such thing before you just went to a layman who has never gone to bible school he'll be teaching you what did you do in bible school and i will ask what has the bible school produced i am a product of bible school I have taught Bible school, but at the same time, is it everybody that passed through Bible school is a child of God? I will say no. I can clearly say no. There are those who are in the Bible school today. 
many some are being expelled for being homosexual in Bible school. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's happening. It's not something that is happening in America. Say happening in Nigeria. Happening in churches. Somebody will still be in Bible school. He has pregnant one, two, three, or, or you know, ladies promising them marriage. They will, such people will still come out and be shepherd. Then you will imagine the kind of pain that will be coming out from the shepherd's mouth. Blessed are you by the grace of God that in our time God has provided us a forum to sharpen ourselves for effective work where he has blessed us. I count you blessed. I count myself blessed. But God forbid it. I will not partake in the war in Ezekiel 34. That the first word God said to the shepherd is war to shepherd. You will not be partaker of that if you will make yourself available for God's use. He determines to use you. If he doesn't want to use you, he couldn't have placed you in any place. Couldn't have called you to place you. He determines to use you. But are you ready for use? Are you ready to be a sharpened knife in the hand of the Almighty God? Are you ready to be a sharpened axe in the hand of Almighty God? To say that even when you have reasons why you should complain not to be used, God have one million reasons why you must not be used. A man wanted to appoint a brother to do one, one job in the church. The brother says, sir, please, I don't have time. He said, yes, I'm looking for people who don't have time. These are the people who I want to do the job. I don't look for people who have time. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? He said, I am looking for people who don't have time. They are the ones that I'm, I want to do this job. It is people who will say, God at all times, I'm available for the one you want to do in your church. The church is not a place where we have come to show how big we are, but how effective we are in what God has called us to do. It is impossible to feed the flock of God effectively by some theological jargons, some great titles, or order or our intellectual knowledge it is only by the word of god so some of us or all of us we pass through seminaries or theological colleges definitely if you are in the university you know it is not all the professors of religion even believe that one can be born again there are many of them don't even believe. They will tell you all the arguments. The first time I went to theological school, I thought I would pack and go the next day. When I heard from one of my tutors that it is not everything that is written in the Bible is correct. And that we should not take it as it is in the Bible. I said, am I hearing, <laughs> am I hearing very well? He said, yes. How could Moses have written about his death? That those things were put together by some priests. After a long time after Moses had died, that they wrote about Moses. That Moses couldn't have written about his death and all that. I said, oh God. Why did I come here? Why shouldn't I go? Does it mean if I'm not ready here, I cannot be a pastor? When I muted it to some of my friends, they said, you shouldn't go. 
I said, what, I, what I'm hearing is not what I thought should be taught in school. And one of us, eventually, after finish, we finished school, went home and climbed their pulpit and said, if you have not gone to Bible school, you will not know some of the things I'm trying to say. He said, it's not everything that is in the Bible that is correct. The people we are looking at, this person. He said, don't take Bible that way. Moses can't write about his death. They said, that's the last day you will preach on our pulpit. You will not climb this pulpit anymore. How can such a person bring effectiveness in ministry? Because we are carrying, swallowing everything they have written in their own short memory, in their own thinking, in their own philosophical understanding, and the way they see God. They say, point, some of them will say, point to us, where is heaven? And point to us where is hell. You say, point to us where is heaven. You point, I say, look at sky you are pointing at. This is sky. It's ordinary sky and cloud. There is no heaven there. Those who are teaching. Is it not in this life that even a bishop had denied the virgin birth of Christ? You know it. You know that that has happened. And he still, he was still a bishop there. So that we carry title and have all the theological things around us does not make us effective pastors. He's taking the word of God by what it is. And by what God say it is. That is when we can reach the people. That is when people find salvation. That is when people can know that it is possible to be here and have communion with God. People are looking to how their hearts and souls can have communion with God. Not with all the jargons we learned in this theological college. And we think that when we stand to speak all those big, big things that they will say, you are, you are an effective person. It doesn't make anybody effective. Or ah. They want this time the Lord Bishop has come. The Archbishop is around. And so whatever he says is like God has spoken. No, it's not true. The title does not make for effectiveness. It's not true. There are still some of us on that high level who do what if he is here, he tingles that makes even the word of God powerless just like Brother Billy was saying they, hear, they see you they see some of us do those things and so when we come to talk we become nobodies to them and we means nothing to them sometimes I ask myself why is it if you say that the ship is not hungry. Why is it that when the big man, who is a big man in our eyes, has problem, who is a person he runs to most of the time, the pastor. But sometimes it might not be his own pastor. He hears that there is one prophet there, or one prophetess. If he goes there, he will tell him all his knee problems. And by the time he steps in, no matter how that house is, whether it is dirty, whether it is something that you yourself cannot go there and stay, he will park his car. He will enter. And he want to hear what the prophetess will say. And of course, before he comes, the prophet said, eh, I know you, I know that, I know why you are here. Or if he's the man of God, they will say, man, man of God, 
man of God. And on Sunday, when those problems were met, on Sunday we still come and say, Praise the Lord, what God has done for me, it is wonderful. But what, where he goes is that small house that you don't know where the power comes from. It's not the power comes from God, but his needs have been met. Whereas you are the number one, God gave that solution in your hand. But there is no time to seek God. There is no time to ask God, how do I do this? No time to actually showcase who you are what is in you what God has put in you you don't have time for it rather we have time for so many ceremonies today this family will give thanksgiving what are we looking for money the other, the other one will give thanksgiving today this society will do this the other society will do this. And today, those ones we call our big members, our big members, they will tell you, Pastor, we have so many things doing. Please let this someone not be more than 10 minutes old. Do you know that the best preachers for the whole for many congregations now is the one who preaches for 10 minutes? He's the best preacher. They say, that's the one we like. It's not where, I don't know why we should sit down here for one hour. Preaching what? For one hour. For that person who will not sit down for one hour. He pays 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 and will go and sit in an auditorium. A comedian will come to entertain. And what is the purpose of entertainment? He went to church. One pastor was doing this. One pastor, everybody will laugh. He pays money to go and sit down to listen to comedian. But for you, 10 minutes. It's because he has not been caught. The word of God has not caught, catch his heart. He has not been caught in the heart. There is nothing there. The day what comes out of you catches you you will cry and know that 10 minutes is not even enough to stay in the presence of god hearing god but because what is just what you, we have been hearing this and some of us pastors also say climb the pulpit brethren thank god for coming church today i think i have i have heard that even when i'm not a pastor what we are about to hear is what we have been hearing. That there is nothing new. It's what we have been hearing that we just want to make sure that we hear something. Can you see it to be hearing what you have been hearing? That is some of the things that some of us do. Some of us, we go to the pulpit without getting prepared to preach. Not prepared to preach. That was the reason why I was referring us to, to a lawyer that has client to defend. He will spend all his time. He doesn't have time for any other thing than to look for facts here and there. But sometimes, internet has made it even simpler for a lot of people. What is it that the internet has done? You open the internet. You download what this man has preached. What the other one has preached. What the other one has preached. You look at the one that look at what you want to give the post. Download, copy them down. And when you are preaching disjointed things, even pronouncing some of the things you wrote down, you can't pronounce them because they are not your words. You don't know the person who put them there. You don't know why he put them there. You just copy here and there and download. And even preaching to people that don't even understand what you are saying. They don't know what you are saying. Brethren, we have come 
here to say to the Lord, it is time for me to be in your hand what you have called me to be. Each day, I know the day for retirement in my own church. I know the, the date I will retire. Each day I will say, Lord, because the reason why I count it is that if I didn't die before then, when I can effectively be their pastor is when I am still there. When they say retire, whether I know heaven and earth, I will only be a member. I may not be given the pulpit like before. This is, you have a pulpit for a while. You have the local congregation for a while. Some of us, few years, will not be there again. Some of us will think you have so many years, you will not be there again. This time you are there. Why not put all your life? Why not put all your energy? Why not ask God whatever you want, to, want me to do every day with your word? If it means chewing it, I will chew it. And make sure that the congregation you give me, none of them. Jesus said at the end of his ministry, say, those you gave me, none of them was lost except the son of perdition. I am returning them to you. How many people are you going to account for? I say, the ones you gave me for these years I'm in the ministry, they never get lost. For the years I am there, because when you are retired, I don't know how it happens in other denominations. I was when you are retired, you are retired. You cannot be asked to pastor the congregation again. You become a member. You listen to others. Even if you feel there is something you would have said, you didn't say, <laughs> there's no time again to come and say it. There's no time. You have had your time. Brethren, this is the only time you have. This is the only period you have. If nothing takes you out before the time of retirement if nothing takes you out you have this short time ask the lord to make you what you should be and when he makes you as we leave this place don't procrastinate don't say i will begin by next year begin now what the Lord is, uh, is asking, what are you doing with my word now? The sheep in your hand are scattering. They are distressed. They are, they are like sheep without shepherd. Even when you are there, let not your position be declared vacant while you are still there. Somebody's own was declared vacant. Well, but when it is vacant, God quickly puts in somebody, even though you are there. Don't you remember Saul? When his position was declared vacant, even though he was still referred as the king of Israel, but in reality, who was the king? So let not be, let you never be Saul, that when you are there, because you didn't obey the world, of the living God for his people you are saying I regret I called him into the ministry I regret I put this congregation into his hand I regret I bless him over these people as shepherd but my people are left if you read that Ezekiel that he said I will now take care of my own sheep I will not give them a shepherd who will, ship, who will shepherd them. This is what I'm going to do. May God never exchange you while you are still there. And may he trust you and trust me for the work he has called me. I will leave the moderator, the coordinator to please
come and do the rest. If there is any other thing we need to do, maybe the last lap will finish with it. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, sir. My Lord, the bishop has raised some weighty issues. Very weighty issues. Appropriately speaking, as I listened to him, I felt indicted. My work as a pastor is to feed, care, and nurture those that the Lord has placed under me. And you know, in all our congregations, we have a mixed multitude. Some of them are not Christians. And that as a shepherd, my job also is to bring those ones to Christ. And even after people have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, it is my duty to care for them, to nurture them, to grow into maturity until they become like Jesus, which is the ultimate. Please let us start praying. It is time for the next program. The Lord will help us. Everywhere we are, please we let will us will continue to pray. But I want us to know and I want us actually to pray about it tonight. Look at the people under you. For a whole year. How many people have you led to the Lord Jesus? And what are you doing to build those that have already accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Uh, to round it up this way, I want to say that when we have properly done our work, our members will be our missionaries where they walk, where they live. Because wherever they go, they are going there as missionaries. The Lord will help us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I want you to pray now for yourself. You've been a pastor for a while now, where you are now. Ask to the Lord. To assess you. Would you consider yourself an effective pastor? Have you been effective in that place? While some of us may look at the structures that we have built, the cars, in the pastorium, as measure of effectiveness. But that is not. Ask God to show you exactly what to do to be an effective pastor. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this challenge. We thank you because this paper is an indictment to us as pastors. We plead with you, O oh God, that you will sensitize us that you will create awareness in us to take our work seriously. But at the tax of preparing your people for works of service that will not take it lightly. Help us, O oh God, even as we continue to meditate on what we have heard. We thank you for the, our Lord the Bishop. We thank you for using him. We ask that you renew his strength and prepare him for tomorrow. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name.